If you would like to see an example solve, there is a link in the description so you can go watch it after this tutorial. Hey guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Now it's not as hard as you may think. Two common questions I get asked when I solve it blindfolded is, do you have to track every single piece as you do turns? Do you have to watch where all the pieces are going in your head and remember where they are? No, in fact you don't have to track a single thing. Now another question I get asked is, do you have to memorize every single face on the cube? And also the answer is no. In fact, I don't really care what the cube looks like when it starts. All I need to do is memorize enough information about the cube so that I can execute a solution while blindfolded. Now, that is not actually a lot of information. I would say it equates to about two phone numbers worth of information. The concept behind solving the cube blindfolded is that there are two different types of pieces, edge pieces and corner pieces, and you're going to want to solve them separately. So if you start with the edge pieces, then this is what you'll see when you've solved them. And once you solve the corner pieces, you'll be done. All right, let's take a quick look at what I have here. Here I have six slots for where playing cards are going to go. So here we have the spot for the ace, two, three, four, five, and six. Each of the playing cards will represent a piece on the Rubik's Cube, and every location will represent its home. So right now the cube is considered to be solved. Now let me scramble this position. All right, now that the position has been scrambled, let's figure out how to solve this using what we can do on the Rubik's Cube. So here are the rules. You must only swap pieces. So you cannot, you can swap two cards like this. However, you cannot just pick up cards and put them where they go. The home for the ace will be called the buffer position. And what that means is that all swaps must include the buffer. Therefore, you cannot swap uh, two pieces like this because you do not swap the buffer piece. Instead, you are allowed to make swaps like this, where you swap the two and the ace here. All right, so now that we know what the rules are, let's figure out a way to swap through these. And I'm gonna put on the bottom here uh, the locations of where we have already swapped to. I will not include the buffer because we will swap with the buffer every single time. So we need to move the two over to the location of where the two goes. So we will swap it with the spot two. Next, we have a six here, so we will swap it with a spot six. I will just bring the four into the buffer and next I will solve the four. So we will swap four now over to its location four, and then five to its location. And once we have finished all of this, then the ace will naturally go back to its spot. All right, so I have scrambled the position again and let's go through the solution. So let's start by moving two, which is currently in the buffer position over to its home location. We are gonna move the six over to its location. Now notice that we've solved the buffer position. However, we are not done yet because there are three more to go. What we do now is we pick any of these spots that are currently not solved and we will swap with that. So we're gonna swap with location number three and then we are gonna carry on as usual. So four is gonna go over here, five will go over to its location and then the three will swap with the ace and now everything is solved. So what I just showed is an example of using multiple cycles. So two needs to go over here and, the, and then the six needs to go here and then the ace needs to go back here. Meanwhile, four needs to go here, five goes here, then three goes back to here. So you can imagine it as a little cycle there and a cycle with a two, six and the ace. So the idea is that you should proceed as usual, put the two over here and then the six to its home. So we have currently finished one cycle and every time you start a new cycle, you need to start with a certain location and finish with the same location. So since we choose location three as the next spot, so we put four over to its location number four, five over to five, and then we must do another swap back to three because that is where we started the second cycle. Okay, I'm sure this is all making sense now, but let's look at one last example. So we start with the first cycle by proceeding as usual. Six goes over to its location and then two goes over here, and then we have finished the first cycle, and the ace buffer is solved. However, we need to unsolve it in order to solve a different cycle. So the four five is a cycle of two. So we need to start by, let's say, uh, swapping with location number four, like this. So then since we started with location four in our new cycle, we must end with location four to finish this cycle. So then five goes over to location five, and then in our buffer is four, so we will finish off by swapping with four. Uh, for here, I'm gonna use white top and green front, but you can use any color scheme you want. So we are going to go back to the example of the card and each of them having a home location. And remember, there's a buffer location. In this case, the buffer location is going to be this piece right here. And this buffer piece is going to be able to swap with any other piece on the cube uh, using one algorithm. And here is our edge swapping algorithm.
If you would like to do so, you can follow along with the scramble in the description, which I have here as well. And I will be using this to go over how to solve the edges. Keep in mind that our buffer position is over here, and specifically our buffer location will be this top sticker here. And we are going to be able to swap that with any other piece on the cube using the algorithm I've shown. So if you remember the example with the cards, the first thing you wanna do is find out where the buffer location needs to go. So it has orange and yellow, so of course it should go to the orange and yellow location, which is right here. And since every piece has two colors, we want to make sure that we're choosing the correct color. So we will always choose the top color here and decide where that will need to go. And on the orange yellow spot, it specifically needs to go to this spot right here because it is orange. So uh, it needs to touch with the orange center. So remember how I said that that algorithm can swap the buffer position with any other position on the cube? Well, that's only partly true because you need to do some moves in order to have it be able to swap with this particular location here. So if you've tried the algorithm on a solved cube, what you'll notice is that it swaps these two corners, which are irrelevant for now. So it will swap this edge with this edge over here. And specifically, we will look at stickers when we talk about swaps. So it will swap these two stickers here. We obviously cannot swap with the piece down here if we're actually swapping with a piece up here. So here's how we're going to swap with any other piece on the cube. We have to be able to place this piece over here, do the swap, then put it back and we want to do so in a way that does not touch any of these three pieces, otherwise we'll be swapping the wrong piece. Now you can do any moves that will move this sticker up to here, because we need it to be swapped with this. So these three pieces here must not be touched, and that is the only rule. So I'm just going to show you how to do the moves, but in general you should be able to come up with them on the spot. So here we can do L, uh, Y, D, and then L prime, and that puts that sticker there. We will do the swapping algorithm. And then we have to undo our setup moves, which means you must remember what you did. So now we will do L, Y, D prime, L prime. And you'll see that this piece is now solved. And if you remember what piece used to be here, you'll see that it's now over here, and specifically the blue sticker on top, because that is the sticker that we swapped with. So now we need to swap this blue sticker with the location it needs to go to. So it's blue and yellow. So we need to find the blue and yellow spot which is over here at the back. Now, since we have the blue sticker on top, you need to swap with is whatever in the blue location here, which is the red sticker. And after the swap, the red sticker will be on top. So how can we move this piece, the red sticker, up to here? And again, I will just show you how to do it. So you can do a D, which puts it at the location we were looking at before, and then do the same moves from there. So uh, you could do L prime, Y, D, L. Then you will do the swapping algorithm. And then you have to remember how to undo all of those moves. You must make sure that you undo it in the same way that you did it. So now you'll notice that the red blue that was in here before is now up here and we have solved this piece. So you will go on doing this for every single piece. I will just go on doing a few more. Uh, this is red and blue, so we need uh, it's the red sticker of the red and blue is on top, so we need to move it to over here. And so we need to bring this green sticker up to here. And you can do this by doing Y, D, L. There it is. Do the swapping algorithm. And then undo your setup moves. Now that is solved, and next we need to do this. The green sticker of the green red piece goes here. So we can do Y, D, 2. L to bring it over here, then swap it. Undo setup moves, and so on. Now you'll notice that the buffer piece is solved, and we've actually encountered this particular situation in the example with the playing cards. Basically what you have to do is swap to another piece, say this spot, because that's easy to swap to. So you swap these two, and then you will start a new cycle. You have to remember that at the end of the cycle, you must swap back to here. So I'm going to do the swap. Now I have the orange green. I'm going to go here. So I can do that to bring it up here. Keep going. Do the swap. Undo setup moves. And this one needs to go over here. So I can do this, this, this. Make sure I don't move that corner out of the way. And then put it back. And next I will move this one to over here, uh, which actually ends the cycle because that's where I started. All right, 
Now there are a few more cycles to go through, but I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You can see the point, the edges are getting solved one by one. All right, so I just did the whole thing by looking at the cube every single time that I got a new piece in the buffer position in order to continue. However, in a real blind solve, of course, you'll have to memorize all these before you start the solve. So you start with a buffer position here and find out where it needs to go. So the orange of the orange yellow side, and that is right here. So the first thing you have to memorize is blue yellow. And then next for blue yellow, you have to look at uh, where the blue sticker is going to go. So you find the blue yellow spot and here it is. And uh, you write down what shows up over there. So uh, on the blue sticker needs to go here. So you will write red blue with red coming first because that's where the blue sticker goes, uh, where this blue sticker goes. Now you will do the same thing for red blue. So uh, go over to red blue, which is this spot and you will write down green red or memorize green red. And then next go to here, which is white red. Then however, white red is the buffer position. So instead of memorizing white red, we are going to ignore that and start a new cycle. And the reason we do that is because you can't actually swap with white red. So there's no point in memorizing that. So this is an edge that we have not solved yet. I will pick this sticker. So starting the new cycle with the orange sticker of green orange. So we'll go over to green orange and see where orange needs to go here. So then uh, next we have green yellow. So we're gonna go uh, here. And then we have white orange. So we're gonna go back to here. Now remember you have to start and end the cycle with the same piece. Not necessarily the same sticker, just the same piece. So this particular location. Uh, so you must remember the beginning and the end of that cycle. Now that the cycle is over, uh, we still haven't solved the cube if you have looked at the pieces that we have not gone to yet. So for example, um, we have not gone to this piece here. So now we can start our new cycle with this piece. So we can look at yellow, red, and uh, the yellow sticker specifically. So let's go to the yellow side of yellow, red. So that's this piece, this sticker. Now we have white, blue. So uh, we go over to white, blue, and now we have green, white. So we go over here and that is the end of the cycle. And in fact, we have now gone through every single unsolved piece on the cube. So we are done. And this is what you have to memorize. So once you have remembered every single piece, um, all you have to do is execute swaps with each of those pieces in that particular order. So what I mean is, for example, if you happen to need to swap over to yellow green, then all you have to do is put the yellow sticker of the yellow green up to here. So you would do D prime L2, and then you can do the swap. And then after you swap this piece over, you will do uh, L2D to undo the setup moves. And you will do that for every single piece that you have memorized so far, and you can try that for yourself. Uh, once you do that, you will find that you will have solved all of the edges. If anything is confusing, you can go back in the video and see if you can find what confused you. Uh, and if it's still confusing, of course, you can leave a comment. So memorizing all of those seems like a big hassle, but it's actually not gonna be very hard if you use a better memorization technique than what I've shown. So at the end of the video, I will be going over some memorization techniques. And of course, if you're curious, you can skip over there now. But just keep in mind that you will be reducing the amount of information you have to memorize by a lot once you have a good memorization technique down. So for the corners, you'll actually do the exact same thing as you did for the edges. You will use a different algorithm, of course. However, the concepts are exactly the same. You will have a buffer position. You will look at specific stickers uh, going through cycles. And all you have to do is memorize a certain sequence of pieces and then execute the swaps in that particular order. So here's the corner swapping algorithm. So you should try doing the corner swapping algorithm on a solved cube to see what it does. So you'll notice that it keeps everything intact for the most part. These two edges are swapped and these two corners are swapped. But since we are worrying about corners here, we're gonna look at which stickers specifically get swapped. So this sticker right here um, is orange right now and it came from right here because this is the orange side. Our buffer location will be over here. So anytime we're looking at what we wanna swap next, it, we have to swap with the buffer, remember that. So that means that this sticker right here um, will be what we look at. The location that it swaps to will be the bottom sticker of our front right, our buffer location and the location that it swaps to. Now we're gonna be able to swap to any location if we do setup moves to bring other pieces over. 
So for my example with corners, I'm gonna be doing the exact same scramble as with edges. So first you wanna look at what this sticker is. This is white uh, with red and green. So where does it need to go? It needs to go right here, the white side of white, red, green. So it needs to go here. So that's the first swap we're going to do. In order to make this swap, you must put this sticker over here without touching any of the stickers that get moved here. So these three pieces cannot be touched during your setup moves. So it's just like with the edges, there are certain pieces you are not allowed to move out of place. And so let's get this one over here. We can do that by doing R2, which puts it over here now, and then D prime. Do the algorithm. Now do undo your setup moves and you'll see that it is now solved. Then uh, what we want to do next is look at this one. It is orange of the orange, white, green, and that needs to go right here. So we want to move this over down to here without touching any of these pieces, of course, which can be done by F prime D. Now do the algorithm, undo the setup moves, and it's solved. And we will just continue doing this. So this is yellow of yellow, orange, green, which needs to go right here. And the setup move is easy, it's just D. Undo setup move, and it's solved. Continuing, uh, this yellow of yellow, green, red goes to, oh, over there. So we just do the swap without a setup move. So now we have white, orange, blue and it is already in the white, orange, blue position because that is our buffer piece. That means that we need to start a new cycle. So what we need to do now is pick a piece that we have not solved yet and uh, start a new cycle with that piece. So um, let's pick this sticker right here because it's easy to do a setup move. And it is the red of the red, blue, yellow. Undo setup move and so we didn't solve any particular piece with that one, but we did move a new piece into our buffer location so we can start a new cycle. Now, red of the red, blue, yellow, um, it goes over here. So we need to move this over to our swapping spot and you can do it like this, R2, F, there it is. And then F prime R2 to undo the setup move, and we have solved that one. So you may remember that I said at the beginning, every time you do your edge swap algorithm, you actually swap two corners. And that, for the most part, is not a big deal. But if you do an odd number of swaps, then they don't end up back where they started. That is only a problem because when you go to corners, then if your corners are not where they started, exactly how you memorize how to solve the corners will not work since your corners uh, have moved. So this is something called parity and we need a way to fix this. So first of all, how to identify whether or not you have parity is once you have memorized edges and memorized corners, if either edges or corners has an odd number of swaps, then you will have parity. If they both have an even number, then you don't have to worry about this, but half the time they will be odd numbers. So uh, here's how to deal with this. Between doing edges and corners, if there is an odd number of edge swaps or odd number of corner swaps, then you have to do this algorithm in between. However, if you don't want to learn another algorithm just for parity, it's absolutely not necessary. You can learn a longer way to do it that uh, is very easy to remember. Just do edge swaps here, here, and then here. First swap to here, which is just no setup moves. Now swap to here, which you can do like this. Undo setup moves. Then swap back to here. And it is uh, practically, it has achieved the same thing, but it is way longer. So you can choose to memorize the algorithm or choose to remember to swap here, 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 uh, whichever way you want to go. Now that I've taught you how to solve edges, corners, and uh, deal with the parity case, then you can actually now solve the entire cube blindfolded. Now, all you have to do is find a suitable memorization method. A popular memorization method is by lettering every single sticker on the cube. So let's start with the edges. You start by going on the top and going around clockwise. So A, B, C, D. And then next you would move on to the left side. Uh, e, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, 
M N O P Q R S T, and then the bottom side U V W X. And then um, you would number it the same way for the corners, except you start with the top left and also go around clockwise. So A B C D. E, F, G, H, and so on. So the reason this memorization method is good is because you can do a lot with letters that, for example, if you had used numbers instead, maybe a little bit tougher to do. So for example, uh, you can memorize the letters in pairs. So let's say you first need to swap over to here, which is uh, D, and then you need to swap to here, which is J. So you would have D, J, and you can just think about a DJ. Um, and for any particular two letters, you can come up with anything, even if it's crazy. All right, so you should be able to come up with something for any combination of two letters. So for example, if you, I don't know, uh, H and uh, S, then HS, um, his for a snake, or uh, high school, it's, it can stand for high school. So like if you got DJ, HS, you could think about a DJ being hissed at by a snake or a crowd, um, or you can think about a DJ in high school. And really, you can just make up a story of whatever combination of letters that you get. And then it's very easy to memorize a story and convert it back into letters, as opposed to if you come up with some other schemes, such as by memorizing colors or locations or numbers, those tend to be harder to memorize. So that is just one way you can do it. Of course, you can Google some other methods. I'm not going to go over every single method. Um, I have experimented with just looking at the colors and coming up with something, for example, um, uh, white green is Peter Griffin, for example, um, but I find that those are extremely hard to use. They take too long to memorize, so I really like the lettering scheme method. Of course, it's very hard to remember where all the letters are. Um, what I like to do um, when I started learning was remember that A is here, so it's really easy to figure out these just by going through, okay, what's one, which one's that? A, B, C, D, and then remember that E is here, I, M, Q, and W. No. That's not W, that's U. If you're looking for, say, P, you know it comes after M, but before Q. So you go M, N, O, P, and there it is. Now, if you, for example, just need this one, then you, you know that that is E right there. So you just go E, F, G, and that's how you know it's G. So uh, that's how I used to memorize it. Of course, if you actually want to practice it, you can get much better at it. For example, if you want to use, uh, if you want to get really, really fast at blindfolding, then you should know these by heart. So it's really not that much of a task. It's just how much you really want to put into it. So if you're still unsure about anything, you can check out the example solve. Hopefully those will clear things up. You can click anywhere on the screen or you can check the link in the description for that. All right, so once you practice this a bit, you can go impress your friends that you can solve the cube blindfolded. And of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and I will see you next time.